Hi, I'm Sarah from The Good Food Magazine and I'm going to show you how to make a mild wine cocktail. So if you kind of want something a bit more sophisticated, a bit cooler maybe for a canopy party than a big mug of hot mulled wine, this has got all the lovely flavours that you like but um, in a martini glass, it looks very glam. So um, it's a bit of a blue peter one this one. But it's good prepare ahead. Who likes making things ahead so they don't panic at the last minute? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so what I've got in here, if you can see, um, I had some muscovado sugar. You could use any brown sugar, but muscovado has that really nice caramel kind of flavor. Um, I put some water in. Uh, star anise, you can see my star anises. Uh, cinnamon stick and some cloves and basically just gently heated it till the sugar melted and then bubbled it for a minute just to thicken it up a bit. Took it off the heat and threw in some sliced lemon and some sliced clementines. Um, so this would last for a couple of days in the fridge, longer if you fished out the clementines and the lemon um, and basically it's just it smells gorgeous, it smells like mulled wine. You could bottle this and give it as gifts as a mulling spice if you want. But to that, so I'm going to sieve out some of the bits and pieces. Let's do that to a nice big jug. Oh, it smells amazing. So to that, I'm going to add a bottle of red wine. Um, something fruity is good, but obviously, you know, don't spend a lot of money on it. I wouldn't. I mean, what do you do when you're cooking spag bol? Are you someone who thinks, yeah, let's use the best bottle of wine, or do you... I'm a kind of... Keep them cheerful. Yeah, exactly, exactly. <laughs> so you can scale this down if you want. You could um, make, if you was just a couple of you and you just wanted a couple of glasses, you could freeze the rest of the red wine and then just use it in cooking. So I kind of put it in ice cube trays and then just add a couple of trays into my spag bol so I don't have to open a new bottle of wine and things. So I've got my red wine in there and then some Cointro. Has anyone got Cointro in their store in their alcohol cupboard at the moment? Oh yes, always. It's really <laughs> you can't not... make you can't make a margarita without Cointro. No. <laughs> good good point, Penny. Yeah. <laughs> it's nice in a bit of um um oh what am I trying to say? Like in mince pies and stuff as well. Because it's got that orange it's already mm. smelling amazing. So I'm putting about 150 mils. Penny, if you want to put more, you can. No. <laughs> You're giving me ideas with the mince pies. <laughs> um, then I'd just, I'd chill this down so well. So I'd have this all done again, like make the mulling spice syrup up to like two days ahead and then make this kind of on the morning and have it in the fridge or something. Just cover it with cling film. I'm just gonna give it a good stir. Um, I don't know your name, but guy in the dark top, what's your favourite cocktail? Well, mine? Yeah. Um, probably a mojito or yep. a Manhattan, maybe. Or oh, what's in a Manhattan? It sounds a bit um, cool. I can't really remember. Hang on, I'll look it up. <laughs> okay, we've got Google. <laughs> Are you a real foodie or more of a cocktail man? Um, a bit of I used to work. I used to work on a bar, so I did a few cocktails, yeah. um, but we didn't do too many because it was a busy bar and it takes so long to to make half of them. They do. Well, but yeah, that I hope. I mean, this one's a little bit more prep, but like I said, you can do it ahead. But that's the problem with some of those fancy cocktail books you buy. Kind of about seventeen ingredients, aren't yes. they? And about two hours of you've got to shake this, then you've got to sieve that, and then you've got to froth yeah, that. Yeah. I can't be bothered no. with all of that. <laughs> <laughs> How's yeah, Manhattan? We, uh, whiskey, mainly in uh, Manhattan. Oh, I don't. I'm not a whiskey fan. No. But well, maybe. I haven't got many whiskey ones. I'm just, I tend to put pink fruit in my cocktails. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't really go with whiskey, does it? Right. No. So um, for a bit of prettiness, I've got two fresh um, star anise. Uh, if you can get the ones that are whole, if you get them from the supermarket, you tend to get half of them bashed up. You get about one whole, one a pot, don't you? But um, if you order them online, there's some places we actually do bags just of whole star anise, which is quite good. 
it's a good tip when I'm food styling, I try and order them from there. So pretend this is lovely and chilled. <coughs> I think it's quite nice as well because it's just like the colour of um, red wine. So your guests will be, oh yeah, all right, red wine in a martini glass, that's a bit odd. And when they taste it, use crushed ice if you've got crushed ice. So are you here to collect tips or just because you like making cocktails and interested in... Yeah, mainly, mainly tips and uh, ones that are easier to make, you know, that you can make in advance maybe in the morning and then by the evening it's all easy to just put together. That's the thing, when you're being a hostess or a host, you know, sometimes you don't get to enjoy your own party, do no, you? No, no. You want to do something a bit fancy. <laughs> really. So I'm just going to finish this, not necessary at all, but I'm just going to finish it with some zest from a clementine so I've got one of those claw zesters I don't really use this when I'm cooking with zest but in order to make lovely curls of zest so it's really good to have one of these in your in your kitchen drawer I mean you could add a slice of clementine to one if you want so I'll do one of each that's got some nice curls if your zest isn't curling just get a little um, glass of ice cold water and drop your zest in it same with spring onions, and they'll just suddenly curl up. So put some zest Ooh, that's on That's a good way. tip. Thanks, it looks Penny. prettier if it's curly. <laughs> yeah, it does look prettier. And spring onions, you know, if you're doing like duck pancakes or something Chinese and you want them on top, and they kind of look a bit sad and flat, don't they? Literally yeah. just really ice cold water and you'll instantly like curl up. It's brilliant. Let's but you find all these tricks doing food styling. Yeah, you do. it's funny because I always think of... Um, I used to always think of the recipes just from an eating point of view, but now I think of them from looks and eating. Yeah. So I often draw sketches and, you know, this is sort of one I would probably draw and then be like, right, what am I going to put in it? What's going to be mm. the actual recipe? So that's it. That's my chilled mulled wine cocktail.